Hey everyone, I want to tell you about an AI agent that I built. So this is called SWAT agent. It analyzes the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of basically anything. Uh, let's go ahead and give it an URL of Wikipedia. What it's going to do is first fetch the content of the URL. Then we're going to go and do some interesting things where we're going to extract Reddit insights. So basically go to a variety of different subreddits, pull in community insights. Then we're also going to look at the competition. So we've got a variety of different perspectives when we come up with this analysis. Here we come back with four quadrants, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, along with an analysis. This is all done with the Gemini Flash 2.0 experimental. All right, so let's take a look at the code to see what's going on. First, let's take a look at the agent itself. Okay, so this is all going to be in the agent.py file. Here you see the core of the agent. Here we define a Pydantic AI agent class. We have a model defined. We're using Vertex AI. We've got dependencies that are additional classes and things that the agent needs, but it's not defined in the core class. We've got a result. What are we outputting? And a system prompt that defines the overall behavior of the agent. So let's kind of walk through from top to bottom how this works. Uh, we've got our various dependencies set up, the request, the Reddit client, the Vertex AI client. It's all here. Again, these are things that aren't needed by the agent itself. These are things that are needed by the agent but aren't a core part of the class. Our result or our output, you see that it's a validatable model class where everything is described and is typed. So we have our SWOT and our analysis fields being returned. We've got a few helper functions throughout. Here I've got a function called report tool usage. This is what surfaces each of the different calls to the tools and maintains a history. And we're going to use that in the user interface to be able to understand what's going on and create that connection between the agent and the user interface. The Pydantic AI framework has a really cool result validator framework that you can annotate a method with and it's going to validate or double check the output of your agent. Here what I've done is a basic demonstration of minimum number of points, the length of each of those points to make sure that they're robust enough. But you could put anything here. It's a great way to ensure that the output's what you're looking for. Now let's get into tools. So think of tools as code that you can execute as part of your agent that aren't part of the agent, but the agent controls what inputs are uh, parameterized, you know, what, uh, how you're calling those tools, how you're using those tools. It basically assembles a solution using this toolbox that you give it. So here we are for three different tools you're gonna see. One is simply fetching the website content. That's where we enter that URL and we then parse it with uh, the beautiful soup uh, parser. That's gonna take that HTML code and extract the text from it. So we have more signal, uh, we're getting rid of the extra tag noise. Next is an analyze competition tool. Here we could use a third party database or other tools if you'd like. Just for demonstration purposes, we're using Gemini to make this call to analyze the competition and Reddit insights. So we're using a Reddit API that invokes uh, a query for each of the different, up to say five different insights. You define that as part of this class. And what's pretty cool here is where you see the connection between the agent and the tool. So you see that the subreddit name has a default of Google Cloud, but it's really whatever the agent thinks is an appropriate community to search for, it's going to call the tool with the name of that subreddit. And you'll see in the logging when you run this tool that the community insights for the SWOT analysis are coming from different places. Finally, we run the agent here, and that simply invokes the run method, also has an additional piece of logging, and finally, when it's finished, updates that status function and says that the analysis is complete. And this can work standalone. We don't need a UI for that. I have at the end, uh, you know, basically a little function to run the agent. 
and let's take a look at that. It'll take a few moments. You'll see the logging. We're doing Reddit insights here and uh, analyzing the competition. Those results should come back shortly. And here we go. So let's look a little closer here and you can see the full data structure that comes back, the various calls, the data structure to the you know strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats all in here. Of course, this is where the UI comes in. We're gonna surface that in the application. All right, uh, so let's just take a brief look at the framework that we used for this. Again, it's called Pydantic AI. It's from the same folks that wrote the Pydantic uh, data validation framework. Uh, it's very uh, clean and uh, great to use. Uh, so hopefully this demo and demo code helps with getting to know Pydantic AI. All right, so now let's go into the user interface. So while I'm at it, let me show you a couple more libraries that I'm using for this. For the app server using Fast API, here's where each of the different routes uh, to the uh, application, you know, for status messages and things like that are annotated with Fast API. HTMX is serves as a, a connection between the user interface and various uh, interactive uh, Java events. So you'll see things like pulling for status, you know, as those different status messages for the tools come about, um, there's a polling mechanism we're going to use from HTMX for that. And then for styling using uh, Tailwind CSS. Okay, so let's now go to the main PY code and let's walk through this. So we've defined our fast API app and for each of the different uh, routes, we have a decorator here. So we um, you know, serve up the standard index.html template. I've defined that here in our templates directory. Uh, this is your main landing page, just the root URL. Then I've got a couple more routes for analyze and uh, status. So analyze is where you click that analyze button and you go off into your analysis and this will kick off the agent and it will start you know accumulating uh, status messages the status endpoint is a way to uh, check the status store that's being updated by the agent and you know checking you know how that's going it ends up surfacing that in a status html template you see here where all of those different messages are then showing up in the user interface and the result endpoint here is basically pulling that final result from the SWAT agent. And you can see where uh, that is in a result HTML page. That's that quadrant of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats is in that result HTML template. And that is basically the core of this. Let's take a look at index HTML. Not to get too deep into the weeds on the HTML, but you see that you know, it's pretty much declarative the way that each of the parts of the UI has classes. This is where Tailwind uh, comes in. Uh, we've defined our header and so forth. Uh, the piece I wanted to share here uh, is around the uh, where HTMX comes in, where the status and result um, divs, the, basically the pieces of the uh, web app, are checking that status endpoint. Here we see load every second for that. And you can even have interaction between the different components. So here what we're doing is once we've received a result, we've fired off all the different tools, they've completed. Uh, what we're doing here is we're clearing out the status, right? You have a final result. You don't need to see all the intermediate status messages. And that's uh, what we're doing in this code. So there really isn't a lot of uh, custom JavaScript that's needed here. HTMX really abstracts away a lot of that. So we've now completed uh, the for basically a tour of the application itself. Uh, let's now look at running the application and we can run uh, Python main.py to run it locally. And we can then just click on this URL here and uh, access it locally. Again, I'll just use uh, Wikipedia for my example, wikipedia.com or redirect to .org, no problem. While that's firing off, let's, uh, let's show how would we use Cloud Run for this application. 
Um, so you're going to see that in the GitHub repository and the README information about running locally, some of the, you know, secrets and s client IDs and so forth that you'll need to set up in your own environment. Don't worry, even if you don't have everything set up right away, you'll still at least have a basic sort of half working but still functional uh, version of this uh, without uh, setting everything up. And here is the command for deploying to Cloud Run. So let's actually deploy this, not running, run it locally, let's run it on Google Cloud. Okay, so what I will do next is I'm going to cancel my local server and I'm going to paste in that command. And it's gonna take a little while. And so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to show you the finished results. So I can go to um, a Cloud Run application you see here hosted on this uh, URL and my application's running just fine. Uh, and what I can do too is take advantage of the auto scaling capability. So it will actually scale down to zero if I'm not running it often or scale up quite a bit uh, as needed. And that's it. That's basically a tour of SWAT agent, how you can build a modern AI agent. And I'll again, point you to where to find this. This is in the generative AI GitHub repo uh, within a sample app SWAT agent directory. I also put the information in the video uh, comments itself and not a lot to get going just clone the repo install the requirements and you're good to go